bodybuilders, um, Olympic lifters, people that have good transfer over into their Olympic lifts will lift high bar. Um, also, a lot of people that end up becoming good at high bar, the second that they start messing a little bit with low bar, as long as they can kind of comfortably hold the bar and doesn't kill their shoulders, they usually crush huge weights. So um, I think it's important to do both. Um, however, uh, if you're new, I would just put the bar wherever you can because you might not have that many options. You might not built, you might not, not have built up enough traps and enough lats and enough this and enough that to really rest the bar anywhere other than just your neck. So <clears throat> when you're newer, you wouldn't sweat it too much about where you place the bar. Try to find a comfortable spot that doesn't compromise your elbows, your wrists, and your shoulders, and just stick with that. So for Mike, Mike kind of goes, I guess you'd say, like almost like a medium, uh, you know, in terms of how low the bar is. Um, <clears throat> he's kind of got it on his, between his traps and his rear delts. And what we're looking for here with, uh, with our squats is we're trying to keep our back flat, just like we said earlier with the, uh, with the deadlift. And we're also trying to keep our chest up. It's kind of common among all three lifts is that we're trying to get our chest up. Um, what we're trying to do um, with any of these power lifts is we're trying to maintain position. So having said that, you can't start in some crazy position that your body's not gonna be able to maintain. You can't start super arched up with your head up in the air because we know the second that you go to lift something heavy that your head's gonna be down, your butt's gonna shoot up in the air and you're gonna turn your lift into like a good morning, right? You guys have probably seen that happen before. Um, one crucial thing, no matter which style of squat you try to choose, whether it's high bar, low bar, wide stance, close stance, um, do not dive bomb the weights. Dive bombing is where someone will, uh, will uh, set up for the squat and they'll go down kind of at a medium or even sometimes a fast pace from the very beginning and they'll just kind of drop and they'll come back up. Uh, that's really stressful on your knees. It's not a, not a great position to come up out of and also it's a little bit tricky on what they're actually doing. It ends up being somewhat of a quarter squat because they're only applying a lot of force into the bar towards the upper, upper part of the lift. Even though they just went full range, they just wiped their ass on the floor, uh, they're still um, kind of quote unquote cheating the lift. As you get stronger, do what you gotta do. As you get stronger, if you're gonna compete in a contest, if you wanna dive bomb the weight, do, do whatever you need to do. Uh, there's a good saying, so lift it perfectly or lift it whatever way you can. So with that being said, you want to always try to practice perfection, but you're not going to always be able to do it. <clears throat> First thing we're trying to do is we're getting our stomach tight before we move anywhere. And then from here, we're going to start to, start to squat. We're going to bend the knees and we're going to force the knees out at the same time. Mike's just going to do a couple reps. It's going to take him a few reps to get a little bit more mobile. The knees can come forward uh, quite a bit in the squat. You, you don't want the knees uh, traveling excessively forward. So you want to try to keep your, um, <clears throat> your knees are going to get to about the midpoint of your foot, maybe even close to where your toes are. And you're trying to force your knees out. Your knees should come out to where your feet are. And in Mike's case, because he's got kind of a medium or close stance, his knees are actually shooting out a little bit past where his feet are. <clears throat> We're going to have Marcus hop in here too. Marcus has a little bit different style. Just throw a plate on there. You want to restrict his mobility. You need a little bit of weight to kind of shut him down. Uh, Marcus has uh, recently squatted 733 pounds. 738 pounds. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 Two pounds. And uh, he's sort of developed a style that looks a little different. That's why I wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, he kind of leans forward quite a bit. Sometimes people think if you lean forward in the squat, it's going to be too demanding for your lower back. He's got a strong lower back. He's also got some strong legs. He's able to take advantage of all that with this style that he uses. See, his feet are straight-ish. He's going to force his knees out again to where the feet are, where his ankles are. He's going to try not to fart. <laughs> and you can see how drastically his head is down. 
Now, if he came up out of the bottom of the squat and the first thing to shoot up would be his butt and it was a two-part lift and things like that, I'd be like, dude, you can't ever squat like that in here again. <laughs> but this has been a style that he's adapted to that he's made work for himself. So each person is going to have some different unique styles for themselves. Um, it, it, could, it could be, uh, he's got, maybe he's got limited range of motion in his shoulders, so his hands have to be as wide as they are. Um, each person is going to be a little different. Just do a few more reps. <clears throat> it's like, God damn, it's burning. Anything more than three reps? It's like CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> have Mike uh, do one more set, add a little bit of weight here, put a little weight on his back, hopefully he doesn't fold over. I'm going to try to move fast, you know you heard me with my little speech about dive bombing, but you do still want to be aggressive, you want to try to get in and out of the bottom position quickly. Ooh. Mike does a good job, especially in training, uh, of, of getting himself tight, you saw him take that big gulp of air before he went uh, down into the squat, he's trying to create pressure in his stomach so that his back and everything else is braced during the squat. <clears throat> As he's coming up, you kind of notice he'll flick his head back a little bit. Whoa! Whoa. That was so fast! Uh, again, notice his feet are kind of straightish. That's something that we've uh, embraced here at Super Training is to help develop uh, the strength and to help uh, create a lot of torque and power through your hips Whoa. is to have your feet straight-ish. Um, it doesn't always work for everybody because most, most people uh, have crappy hips and they have crappy mobility, but you want to try to keep your, uh, your feet straight when you're doing a squat. Um, if that, if when you do something, if you do any of the things that I mentioned here today and it hurts, then understand that your body might be slightly different than some of the things I'm describing today. So we have some guys in here, I'll say, hey man, put your feet straight. I'll say, dude, that fucking kills my knee. Well, obviously I'm not going to make them squat in a way that's going to hurt them, so we'll have them over a period of time work on building up their hips, the various movements that we do in here, box squats being one of them, uh, using a hip circle a lot is another, building up the hips over a period of time to where they can have their feet straight. And we've seen that help, we've seen that help these guys time and time again uh, build up both their deadlifts and their squats.